Welcome to First Aid Copites, a podcast for Delaware's Liverpool supporters and their friends. Hey, welcome to the latest edition of First Aid Copites. Uh, um, this is episode six of season four. Uh, I'm Paul, and I'm joined today by Daz and uh, uh, Sean's return um, after what seems like a long absence. Um, <laughs> and I have made sure that he he watched the game before asking him a question about it. And, uh, <laughs> and we're, we're good to go on that score. Um, it's uh, August 7th, and yesterday Liverpool played the first game of the season. Um, some fool on last week's podcast uh, suggested this would be an easy win. Um, what nonsense was that? Uh, two-two draw. Um, probably lots to say about it, and that's what we're going to get into in part one. Um, where, where to begin? I'll, I mean, I'll start with you, Sean. Um, I think uh, Daz's message at the end of the first half was "oof," mm-hmm. uh, which which I, I thought was a pretty good summary of of like just how bad that felt. Yeah. Yeah, I had a little bit different perspective because I was only able to watch like most of the second half live on streams, but I watched like the first half back mm-hmm. last night. And um, so I, I already knew kind of the result. But um yeah, I I I thought I, I I thought I'd be able to pinpoint more clearly what was what had gone wrong, like with having that perspective ahead of time. And I, I really couldn't. Um best I I could I could figure is that they you know they they I think Fulham had a really good game plan and they executed it well and uh, we just weren't able to react for whatever reason, whether it's like you know rust or or whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it was not good. Um, I I think they did a good job kind of cutting off the balls to, um, particularly to, to Fabinho. They 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 sort of they sort of cut that pass out. And then when Trent and Tiago were receiving the ball, they were just pressing super hard. And the the referee, the, and I do think that he kind of officiated it the same way throughout, but he was just allowing a lot of rough stuff, uh, a lot of after the well, play. One way. You know, you know. One and, way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it was a lot of it went Fulham's way, but I, I think it just sort of played into their hands more than anything else. Um, because when Tiago and Trent were receiving the ball, I mean, it was like, they they had guys just running full speed at them and didn't slow down, just plowed right through them. Um, and so, you know, and that, that that seemed to work. We couldn't really pick the lock um, in the first half anyway outside of that. But it, it did change, I think, drastically in the second half. We'll, we'll talk about the second half, but I'll just get a, yeah. a, something from Daz because I, n- I know you had pointed out that stat where is it seven of the last nine games we've played, we've conceded the first goal. Um, I'd like to believe that's not a pattern. But it sure sounds like one. Um, you know, even if you know there's been a two month break between you know most of those games and and uh, and now, um, I, if, if, I mean, several things kind of stuck out for me. I actually felt like someone in the midfield wasn't quite fit um, the way they played, uh, and I don't know whether it was Thiago, I don't know whether it was Fabinho, but it, it looked like they were a little off the pace. And then I thought there was a very revealing comment from. Clop about the pitch being dry, which I know drives other fans crazy, but um, I mean there, there is there is a thing about about like not making the pitch suitable for the kind of passing that we do, um, which we've seen in other places. So it would, would not be a particular surprise. Um, kind of uh, you, you, your your thoughts on the the first half, and then we'll move on to kind of better stuff. Um, just on the, the the pitch, the dry pitch. I think Fat Sam used to do that quite frequently when when we came to play. Because I remember, I seem to remember Stephen Gerrard saying something about it. Just kind of like the chicanery or the kind of the dark arts of it. Um, so it's it's not unusual. Uh, I think that that sides are going to use whatever whatever they can to their advantage. Um, as someone did point out, just on that particular issue, is like Klopp has a long a long litany of of. Of, of instances where he does stuff like this to kind of deflect from his players, kind of drag it onto himself. And was like, oh, he's such a whinging old ball bag. But it's in a game of fine margins, like that's exactly what happens. Like it's our passing in the first half was well off. Uh, our midfield, it's, it was just, it was, it was frustrating to watch the number of times it was balls undercooked or they were just kicked straight to, straight to opposition players. And that's another thing that the clock into that. He's like, 
you can say what you want about how well they did, how well Fulham did, but we just we played into their hands. Uh, we, we 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 did exactly what they needed to do. And for a team that's as good as, as we are and it's played under the type of pressure that we have year upon year against teams like that, that we know full well they're going to come out at us and 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 try and have a go at us. Like you'd expect them to be better, to, to be more ready for it. I just think that, and I've said this before on, on, yeah. on this particular show as well, is like generally when we have swoons, like it's almost team-wide swoons. It's not like one or two players that are, that are just off. Verge wasn't playing well. Robbo was a little off the pace. Trent, I've definitely seen him play better. Fabinho gets hooked at what sixty. Uh, it's it's Tiago is now injured. It, yeah. it was just it was a lot of players that didn't stand up to be counted. And it's this isn't like top rhetoric like we need to get people in and then and clop out and all that other stuff. But you you have the right as a fan to call out what you see as a bad performance. And it was it was a pretty bad performance. If if the head coach is telling you that they just we weren't on it and he was very disappointed. It feels like Pep Linders, Linders, however you pronounce his last name, soaked all the intensity out of our team and put it into the title of his book. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's, it's and but it changed, you know. It's that's one thing you can say for Klopp. But there was the shot by that that's that uh, off the, off the post that would have changed the the, the 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 nature of the game completely if if yeah. Diaz's goal, if Diaz's shot had gone on and gone in mm-hmm. the first half. Um, again, it, it's. It's fine margins, but have and, and someone else pointed out had had Hendo's uh, shot off the bar gone in, like it would have been a gritty performance. Like the, the narrative would have changed completely, and that's 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 the nice edge that you, that you walk on as, as this team. But yeah. I think that from the thirty thousand foot uh, foot point of view, I think that we've talked about this off air. It's like you're not going to get many many of these, and it's just kind of frustrating that it's. Hopefully. Yeah, it's the first game of the season against a freshly ro- a promoted team. Um, you're not. Yeah, that means that somewhere else you're going to have to burgle points where you might have been able to to say a draw will do here. And you know, like we, they made us the, all of us sound like a bunch of ball bags because we're like, ah, you know, they've come up, they haven't signed anyone. They're kind of off seasons that could have been up and down. You know, these guys played probably ten percent better than the the, the best of their ability. Yeah. And we played twenty to thirty percent beneath for for periods of the game where we needed to be better. We were just we just absolutely weren't. I I don't know how great they are actually. Uh, I, you know I don't know how great they were in that game. Uh, and it, I mean it felt like whatever they did worked. But I mean there were points in the I, don't know, I mean let's go on to the second half and I'll, I'll go to you, Sean. But the points in the second half were I, kind of watching, thinking, oh, what we're gonna well, of course we're gonna win this. Now they they've kind of run out of energy and. And then they got the injection of energy from the penalty. Uh, interesting penalty calls this weekend. We may talk about that a little later. Um, but I, I think I, I looked at the XG and I can't remember where, where I saw it, but I think Liverpool's XG was like 2.3 something mm-hmm. and theirs was 1 point something. I don't know if you saw that, Sean. Yeah. And, and for me, that that reflected more. I mean, I, I was frustrated with Liverpool's performance and they've had these first half performances like that Villa away when we won two one with the last minute Mane goal, um, that w- that was very I think very similar to mm-hmm. the way we played. And I think to your point, if Henderson's uh, last minute thing had gone in, it would very much have been the narrative. But actually, for forty for forty minutes, that I thought they controlled the game, and uh, you know the the referee tried his best to uh, help Fulham. It was quite successful in some instances, but but overall, I think you know we were pressing at the end for 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 you know what would have been a. a, a in my world, you know, based on the XG, a deserved win. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, just to to jump ahead, I what I thought really changed in the second half were when Darwin and Harvey came into the match. Personally, I think that's what changed things. Um, I think Darwin was was making a lot of aggressive runs up top that helped stretch their defense, pull them back. Um, and I I thought Harvey was just a lot more creative than Jordan. Jordan Henderson was in the first half. Um, you know, I think what what they did was they they tried to take Tiago and Trent um, out of the game, and we didn't have anybody that could step up and help create. And I think when when Darwin and Harvey came in, it was kind of a twofold thing. Like Harvey is just a different type of player than Henderson is. I mean, it's not necessarily a knock on Henderson; he's just not that type of player um, anymore, anyway. And um, I think he added like a huge dynamic there. Um, 
in terms of trying to break their lines. And then um, what was, I, I think what was happening is, you know, Henderson was, was being told to play further forward and Bobby, you know, likes to drop back. So they were kind of in the same space a lot in the first half and it just made it easy to mark. And when Darwin came in and was kind of making a lot of those runs, aggressive runs up top, um, it just it just made us a lot more difficult to play. Just just I I thought those were kind of the two key changes that that were made, and and then we we totally opened them up. I mean, I, I had it pulled up. Um, Understat has this like timeline that they do. Um, let me see if I got it. Yeah, and then so you know, in the 58th, so I think th those subs were made around 53 and right around then, like in the 58th minute, they had 0.51 XG. We had 0.10. And then by the 70th minute, we had 1.79 and they still have 0 0.51. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's the second half we, we play for the most part, we played like we should have the entire match, um, but it just wasn't enough. And then the penalty kind of, um, made it more difficult for us to get the win. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know where Madley comes from, the referee, but I have a strong feeling that uh, it's a short drive to Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So, so let's let's wrap up the review of yesterday, and then we'll we'll kind of do a quick uh, in part two a quick view of what happened elsewhere. Um. So, so if 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 folks are uh, listening to this, watching this, um, what what what's the sense of hope and optimism, Daz, that you'd want to give people uh, based on that second half performance? We got that shitty game out of the way early. <laughs> <laughs> it's a start. It's a start. <laughs> um, look, I th I think the bright sparks of the new kids acquitted themselves. Well, if you, as in as much as you want to say Harvey's a new kid, I think that the new kids acquitted themselves quite well. Uh, Cavalio, there was something about that side of the park because uh, Luis Diaz was almost invisible for a large portion of that second half. Yeah. So I'm not sure what if there was some strange juju on that side, but I think Cavalio struggled to get into to the game. I'm not convinced that playing him out there is the best place for him. Not from like the limited amount of time that I've he has flashes, but he's he's definitely someone that's better on the ball more frequently. So I still feel like my, personally, he's a 10. I'm, I'm, I don't coach the team. I don't see him in a practice, but from what I, from these two things stuck above my, my nose, I, I'm thinking that he looks, he looks better suited to, to, to being on the ball a lot more than he, than, than, than he seems to have been recently. Um, but Darwin comes on, he could easily have had a hat trick. There's the one that there's obviously there's, there's the, the the second one that goes in with that little cheeky flick. It was the first one that the goalkeeper saved. There was the one that inexplicably, when he's six yards out on top of the on top of the the, the box, there he just he opted to pass it instead of rifling it on net. Um, there's the one that he stepped on that that no Moe mentioned ended up poking in. Like all of those better touch, he, he's probably putting the ball away. Uh, I think the future is is bright there. Uh, he came on for what? He came on in the 51st minute, so he's on for about. 40 minutes yeah and he was he gave he gave the team a lot to, to think about that they that they probably hadn't our team's going to figure him out later on this season i don't know because a lot of what he a lot of what he does is is is, is through sheer industry and also i think that he's never quite sure what he's going to do when he gets it so it, it's kind of tough to predict what his patterns are going to be um harvey elliott <laughs> apart from him giving the ball away with his very first touch a kick in the ground or stepping on it. He was it was lovely to see him get into get a get a good good run at it and and be instrumental in in changing the balance. I think when our first goal went in, I was convinced that that was it that we'd go on and we we peppered them. Yeah. So to, to to different effect right after we scored that first goal. But there's um I, I thought that was it was gonna go our way. Madly look Virgil didn't, didn't just sneak a leg out like that. That was kind of lazy. Um, and referees are going to, if you give them the, the, the decision to make, they, they're going to make a decision and so off, you just got this one wrong. Even after they went to VAR, I think for a big guy, Mitrovic definitely has some serious crumple zones. Yeah. And it seemed like Madley was buying whatever he was selling. There was a lot, um, of, a lot of crumpling going on this weekend in various other games as well. And, and what was driving me crazy was 
they kept talking about, oh, the referee into a different standard now. They're yeah. not, none of that soft stuff. And it's like, okay, Chilwell, let's start with yeah. him. None of that. Happened. Mitrovic. Yeah. I, actually, I, I did put this in the agenda, but do you think Mitrovic has got English ancestors? Because he was getting the same <laughs> treatments as all the English players where they fall over and it's a foul. Uh, it could have been like, oh, shame, it's, it's the new guys. Oh, 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 oh be softer right. in their direction it's it's just boring like why every single in week we talk about like decisions that that they won't overturn because the referee made them and they're going to go with the referee if there's a like quote unquote enough evidence to suggest yeah like, i had to watch that five times to see like anything i'm like mm. and it looked like mitrovic stepped on his foot as he was pulling it away and then went down when he felt that contact and i i don't know like it's you give it a free decision to make. It was soft. It was really soft. Considering how Harry Maguire was getting away with with all kinds of murder today, and the way that this, this the Sandro Martin, Martinez or Martinez plowed down who was that Welbeck? Welbeck, yeah. Yeah. In, yeah, yeah, in the box. Like yeah. it's. I, I think what frustrates most people is like there's zero consistency, and I guess look, subject refereeing is a lot of subjectivity to it. You know, you know some refs are going to give you this, some refs won't, but. Mm. Something like that that's, that's potentially game changing. There has to be some sort of consistency to it. Agree. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's talk a little bit about that in part two about the inconsistencies elsewhere. But um, I just to wrap this up. Um, not a great start, obviously, uh, especially considering what other teams have done. Um, uh, ten days, almost ten days to the uh, next game, uh, home to Palace. So. Um, Hopefully they've got plenty of time to figure some things out and figure out how to stop conceding the first goal in most of the games we play. Uh, yeah, let's leave it there for part one. Hey, welcome back. It's part two, uh, first day Copites. Uh, we're going to look around at games elsewhere um, and you know, choose which end of the table you want to look at. But uh, a couple of things that I thought were um, interesting this weekend well, I, I mean, the, the most interesting is always uh, that I love the uh, the tweet. Manchester United managed to lose more games this weekend than Liverpool, as many games this weekend as Liverpool have in the whole of 2022. <laughs> that's, uh, that's that's always a good place to start. Um, we, we just said in the first part, some of the refereeing uh, and some of the things that people were counting for fouls in the allegedly new, um, we're, we're not, you know, we're not giving soft fouls anymore. Well, it seems that if you're English or Mitrovic, then that didn't quite apply. Ben White, Ben Chilwell, maybe you need to call Ben, I don't know. Um, we're looking at you. Uh, there's also a conversation. Oh, I'll, I'll, so I'll go to you, Sean. Uh, you know, ha have at it. United, uh, who's leading the table? This dodgy decision-making? Uh, I mean, I guess I'll start off with the... Um... I feel like there was a lot made of the Arsenal match beating Palace and um, like they really weren't that much better than Palace, you know, they, they, much at all. It was just sort of, you know, Palace had an own goal late and um, you know, the, the goal they got was off a set piece and Palace actually had a couple of really good chances. So, um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't um, downplay Palace and I, I think I, I'm, I think Palace looks pretty good heading into the season and, and um, you know, we shouldn't overlook them either. Um, Spurs look good, but um, it, it seemed like they were a bit fortunate to have four goals out of that performance. Um, it, it seemed like Chelsea, Chelsea were not very good and got, got the good fortune of one of those penalty calls um, to help them get the win. And I, I didn't watch a lot of the city match today, but, um, from all accounts that that I you know heard anyway that they um, had to kind of scrap for their goals you know they got the penalty on the one but both both were deserved and they dominated the match I mean I, I think at one point I looked and they had like over eighty percent possession twenty minutes in or something um, so you know a, a lot of um, results that are not good for us kind of all around with Spurs Chelsea Arsenal and City. But um, not really that unexpected either, most of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, lots to say. It was interesting, actually, when I was looking for the Liverpool-Fulham uh, XG, um, I noticed that I think Palace had a slightly higher XG than Arsenal, which, yeah. which was, I think, quite quite telling. I, I didn't see the whole game, but it did seem they uh, like huffed and puffed a lot in a kind of very Arsenal way without necessarily looking 
as dangerous as 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 they probably think they were um yeah plenty of other places to go uh I, I i'll leave to you whatever you want to go with but the, the other topic i found interesting was like and we're going to do um uh predictions in the next part but uh of the teams that were co- like consistently predicted to be in the bottom three um two of them won Bournemouth mm-hmm. and Leeds. Uh, so i don't know what that says about uh, the league whether that's just a complete anomaly um so what what, what do you want to go with does uh what are my options <laughs> well, you know, so so what, I, I saw a tweet just before we, we uh, started recording, which I absolutely loved. Maybe you can go with this. Um, it was, it's so difficult to put a finger on why Manchester's Paul Tierney has made so many generous decisions to Manchester United. It's, again, it's, how many shows have we, like, aired grievances? And it's, it's just, it has, it won't change because they don't want it to do they have well, it's not that they don't necessarily don't want it to change. They just don't feel the need to do it. Like it, you can't tell me that, that that somehow the Greater Manchester area has a glut of referees that that what well, they're the only place in town that that that, that cares to, to 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 referee or, or officiate games. It's like it's incredible to me. Yeah, and they continue to keep doing this. Like it's a high profile game, and he's just there handing the shop away to to England's brave England's brave bloody Harry Maguire who's more handsy than a love struck teenager in the front seat of a car on a first date it's like he's it was unbelievable like the number like he's just pouring at everybody it was the one like, I think it was Trossard I think it was like he, two hands on the shoulders just pulls him down already on a yellow card nah, yeah yeah I watched then, that entire match today and it, I had it's been a while since I had watched the whole Man, you match the you know other than we play him and he was so poor. Like I actually thought Mart- Martinez looked pretty good for good, good chunks of it, but McGuire yeah. was just so bad. Like it, you know. Yeah. So, so I don't know how good Martinez is actually. Um, and I think yeah. the the it should have been over, a penalty for him too. Yeah, well, it should, it should well have been back. a penalty, and he was on yellow. Yeah. But I I thought he was doing basically he was doing a lot of covering behind McGuire. Yeah. It, it was d- just constantly covering behind McGuire. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, I think we're back, you know, so we can talk about them forever, right? Because it's fun. Um, <laughs> but, but I think we're back to the, the I, 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 like I mentioned this in the when we were chatting uh, on the group, um, they cannot play it. I, so you could play really great midfielders in that team. They cannot play like a really compact format because of the players they've got. Like mm-hmm. Maguire's got no speed. De Gea doesn't want to come off his line, and then. I, I God knows what Fernandez is doing. Um, you know, really trying to win fouls. Uh, is that his game now? I don't know. Find a chin. <laughs> uh, it's, oh, I, I, did, you, did you guys watch the City game? Any of that today? I watched up to the penalty. Yeah, I, it was, I watched it, a tiny bit. It was, I, I, what I actually would observe is this was really dull. Like them shifting the ball around. Oh my God, it's dull. The second goal came from that, and, and uh, whoever the the commentator on this side of the pond was said that that's kind of what they do is like they lull you, they lull you into like to, to, to like so some sort of NUI based uh, dream sequence, and then two passes later, and they're through on goal. Mm-hmm. But that's, that's what I was what I was struck was is T, and I think we might have said this before, so forgive me if I'm chewing up some of the same earth. Is like teams feel like they're always going to have a chance with us. Yeah, and it's frustrating. Is like, and I think the guys in Anfield Rap said this today, so I might be, might be repeating something that I already heard. But like, teams will hang in there knowing that we will give them a give them a chance. And whereas City, it's like it's it's just death by football. It's like it's just like it's one big eleven v eleven rondo, and they're very very good at it. But it's dead boring to watch. My God. And I think someone on Twitter and Twitter said like I'd much like it, it's frustrating and oftentimes heart attack inducing for us, but I wouldn't have it any other way. To be able to just have to sit and watch that all all day, every day, week in, week out, there's there's no peril to it. There's no there's no drama to it. It's like it's it's a foregone conclusion. But teams will show up to play them knowing that kind of just with one foot out the door already, where teams come come and play us, like Fulham, like that's a free hit for them. Like yeah. no one's expecting them to get a result against us. Uh, the guy on the Anfield rap, the, the, their their contributor said, like, get a goal early and hold on to it. And that's exactly what they did. Yeah, 
and they, they had some some favorable bounces of the ball too. But it's we 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 don't crush teams when we should, and we give them like we will provide them with an opportunity, yeah. and 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 they live for those one or two opportunities, and sometimes they go in, and then this is this is the, the final result. Whereas City, like they just they just murdered West Ham today. Well, I, I do feel like today Moyes gave one of those team talks, right, about where like oh my God, these are so good. We need to be like covering here, covering there. Because it looked like they had absolutely zero ambition in the first half an hour. Um, like they were, all they did was hoof the ball away and it came back in this kind of, you know, metronomic style they have. That was for you, Daz. Oh, I was, I was, I was hoping Sean would have some calls <laughs> of wisdom for us. But yeah, that's not, that's, I, I can do without it. I, yeah. I guess I like I guess I like the adrenaline and the uh and the cord the cortisol. Yeah. Agree. Okay. Well, so maybe Sean has nothing else to offer. Well, we'll I, 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 I would just say, like, yeah, I I agree. Like, that's you know, cities, cities, um, cities more like you know, death by a thousand cuts, and whereas we we tend to hit people with you know, quick strikes and and um, yeah, it's a little yeah. bit more exciting to watch I, I, I will say like West Ham they, they did they did play like that a lot last season where they were just sitting back you know very defensive very conservative and then they would try to hit people when they had opportunities um I didn't watch a lot of the, that game today but um it's not that's not unusual for them to play that way either well there's so, something to be said because the, the second goal was a counter to a counter mm-hmm it was like two passes. They 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 committed guys forward. West Ham did, and three passes later, Holland was in on goal. Oh. And there was just acres of space in the midfield. Yeah. You could have driven a, 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 a division of tanks through it. So the other thing I would say is it was also what uh, eighty seven degrees. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, may, may, maybe that played into the way that West Ham played, trying to conserve energy because they clearly lost a couple of people before the game. Um, like they had to play with um, a fullback at centre half, mm. maybe influenced the way they played. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's uh, let's leave it there because I'm sure we'll talk again about Bournemouth, Leeds, and Fulham in our next part, where we come to talk about predictions for the season. Um, love the way we're unconventional on this. We kind of wait to see at least one round of matches before uh, <laughs> committing to some stupid prediction. Yeah. A lot of those pundits could do with a cut with it with holding up for a game or two <laughs> they, as well. Absolutely good. Yeah. Crystal you, ball. You, mean, you jackass. <laughs> so so let's do that in part three. Hey, welcome back to part three. Um, we are going to do the predictions we probably should have done preseason, but you know, um, we like a chaotic sort of thing and we like to be ahead of um, ahead of other people who predicted things without actually seeing any games. So now that we've seen one round of matches. We're going to look at a bunch of things here. Um, top four. Um, so we'll kind of go around and, and I think we'll do this like top four. We'll all talk about top four. And then we'll look at who we think is going to get relegated. Uh, first manager to leave. I don't know if the weekend's results have changed that any. Uh, and then who do we think? I'm not going to do goal scorer because I don't want to talk about that bastard Haaland ever <laughs> in our, on our shows. Um, so we're not going to talk about goal scorer. We'll talk about player of the season. Um, I, I, there's something completely dislikable in my world about him. Um, once a blue, always a blue. Fuck off. Okay. Um, it's probably what he said yesterday. Uh, let's go with top four. Um, Sean, what, who, who are you thinking about top four? Yeah, I, like no particular order. I, I have, I have uh, us winning it, City in a close second. Um, and I think Spurs and then Chelsea is is uh, my thoughts on top four. I think, um, you know, I, I, I think Spurs, um, if you look at, you know, how they did last year after January, they were they were pretty strong. Um, Kulichewski, um had another really good game um, yesterday. I mean, he was very good kind of down the stretch. He gets a lot of assists for them. And, um, you know, I think they've made some good additions and, um, and and that's all assuming Conte is going to stay for the whole season. Uh, there's some questions around that, but um, I, I think that they'll 
they'll do well. But I think there'll be, you know, a significant gap between second and third. And I think there'll probably be another pretty significant gap between fourth and fifth, in my view. I, I don't I don't think that anybody else is really all that close to that top four. Um, so um, there are three coaches currently coaching in the Premier League whose teams have got 90 points. Um, and that would be uh, Klopp, Guardiola, and uh, Conte. So you know, I guess my perspective, that's a pretty good shoe in. I won't reveal who I think is fourth because I'm not really sure who that's going to be. So, but I'm going to go to Daz um, so he can share his wisdom. And that's what we're calling it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd probably go with the top three in Sean's particular order, even though the Klopp out has been ringing across the Twitter sphere already. Um, uh, us City. Uh, I'm gonna go with Spurs third. I don't think the gap's gonna be as big as we think it is. Uh, the fact that they had three different scorers, none of whom were named Kane or Son, that says that they that they're gonna start. Uh, they're starting to unlock it. I think the, the, the potential that they have. They've made some really really good signings. Southampton were poor, but yeah. Um, Ward Prowse's goal was delicious, but they, they, I don't think that there's that's going to be there'll be a week in week out basis. I think what'll play Spurs is, is ties. I think that they'll they'll drop quite a few points without losing, uh, and then I'm going to put Arsenal in fourth, and and that's based on I I've seen, I watched them play against Everton preseason, granted, but they they just look like a a, a more a more switched on unit. Let's put it that way. I think the addition of Jesus was going to be, will be a big one through over the course of the season. I know he didn't find the back of the net in this game, but I think that that's, that's, that, that might be the piece that they need. Um, outside of that, it's United. Are, 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 you're kind of touching already, but they're, they're struggling. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure if they're going to get it together enough in time enough to be able to make that top four, because we, and we said in the first portion, like the margin for error is so so slight, like and and in the modern age where like ninety plus is what you need to to even be in the conversation, that the days of like seventy eight eighty two is being good enough is is long long gone. So you like yeah. your margin for error is so slight, mm -hmm. and their their margin their error margin is being quite large. Yeah, yeah. So so Sean, you went for uh, um, Chelsea in fourth place, and and as you've gone for. Um... Arsenal in fourth place. Well, I, I mean, I think the plain fact is it can't be United, right? What did they get? 58 points last season? Mm. Um, I, I, good Lord. Um, well, they were looking to be six with 58 points. Um, I, I, I think, I, I feel like, obviously we've got a bit to go before um, the, the, the transfer window is closed and you know, Bowley could continue his bizarre spending spree. And spend another sixty million on a like a, a middling striker. I don't know, um, but I, I do think it seems more likely that Arsenal will make it. I, I feel like having watched Chelsea yesterday, they're they're going to have a lot of draws, uh, a lot more draws than than uh, than they should. So I'm going to go with Arsenal as well. Uh, and nobody's going to hold us to account for this, so we can change our minds halfway through the season if we really want. <laughs> but anyway, really, I found the relegated thing really interesting, actually. So we'll go to that next. And um, like, I'll, I'll I'll start with like the the lazy option is to say it's all the all the promoted teams, but apparently it's very rare for all the promoted teams to get relegated in the same season. So someone else is going to have to go down. And I think a lot of the people were talking people were talking about uh, Everton as an option. See no reason why that might not be an option. Leeds, because I, I, I mean, I think there's some anti Americanism in that um, about Leeds, uh, but they won yesterday against Wolves, who seem to find it very hard to score goals. But then the other one was Southampton. And and I, I, I read the other day that apparently, um, you know, people talk about Hassan Hootl being sacked. Apparently, they've replaced all of his backroom staff um, at the start of this season. And I'm like thinking, hmm. This sounds very Rogers, right? We don't actually want to fire you just yet, but we're going to do the next thing to that and let everyone else go who's worked with you. That feels really weird and feels like something they could be in line. Mm. What are your thoughts? Who, who are your favorites to be relegated? 
Uh, I think I did, I I got um, you know Bournemouth as uh, last twentieth. Okay. Um, and then I I think it'll be kind of a battle for the other ones, but I actually have um, Forest and Southampton. Um, and I've I've actually changed that over the last you know I don't know um, month or so, but um, I I actually like a lot of the business that Forest have done, but um. You know, I, I think that there's there's a lot, you know, for them to. Uh, well, it's it's kind of a big ask for them, even with all the signings, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I think Fulham will be right there, but I think they'll stay up. I I, I think Marco Silva is like a better manager than than he's shown so far. I mean, I, and I I think he kind of showed that against us yesterday, um, and you know, they they still have a lot of the players that they had last year, and they they had a great season in the championship, so. They lost some key players, but they the rest of the core is still there, um, and I think that they're they're planning to make some more additions. Um, and I, I I do think that uh, both Leeds and Everton will be kind of right there in the mix. Um, so I think it'll be you know kind of a scrap for those last two, but I think Bournemouth will definitely be the the one that will will certainly go down. Didn't they just beat Villa? They did. Well, yeah, but you know it's it's game one. So, mm-hmm. well, and and I mean, and, and I'll just go back to like the the reason that I think Arsenal won't be top four is because I feel like they do this a lot, um, even under Arteta. But like you know, kind of since Finger left, and even a little bit, you know, they'll they'll blow out some of these some of these lesser sides, and then as soon as they come up against a big club, and they get smashed one time and lose by four goals or something, they just lose all the confidence. And um, I just feel like they're they're sitting there ready for that to happen again because I don't I don't see how they how their central defense and and uh, central midfield is going to be good enough to kind of cope with that. So. so so we will no doubt reflect on that through the rest of the season. Yeah, you're not trying to distract from your relegation picks, are you? No, no, not at all. <laughs> no, my, my picks, my picks are there. I just think you know it's 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 difficult to pick uh, number nineteen and eighteen. So- so That's you went. You, so just to be clear, you went for what? Bournemouth, Bournemouth, uh, Forest, Bournemouth? and Southampton. Southampton. Okay. Yeah. What? 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 What are your thoughts, uh, Daz? Because I think Forest will go back down. That's my. That's kind of my my shoe in for. For the freshly promoted mm-hmm. back down relegation squad, um, I honestly think that if they don't get rid of Frank Lampard, I think Everton will go down. It's just there just seems to be such a toxicity around that entire setup, the club, like the failure of them to the, the, the Usmanov stuff. It just it just feels like there's yeah. a cloud of inevitability of this just floating over them. And then um I'd probably go for Bournemouth too. I just don't think that Scott Park is a good enough coach to keep them up. Yeah. Yeah. I I so before yesterday I'd have been like, oh, it's gotta be Bournemouth. They've not added any players. And it's like, oh, they, they won a game. But you, you're right, it's a one-off. Um, I, th- I think I think Fulham will go down. Oh, I really don't think they're that good. I, I yeah, think they, we, they'll we, certainly be, be in the mix. I just, I, I, I'm i doing that. That's fully based on the fact that uh, I think Silva is a decent manager. And um, and I think that they still have the core of that team from last year. I, I, I think on a different day, you know, we like, so we play the second half twice. You know, we we're reckoning yeah. a big score against them. And I think other teams they're not they're not going to have the oh it's a cup final against Liverpool most of the season, right? So mm-hmm. so I, I I in my list was Fulham. At this point, I see nothing keeping Everton up, um, because they have an inability to score, uh, and even with the uh, fanfare of the uh, the coach being cheered in, they still didn't win. Against <laughs> Chelsea, not a great Chelsea team, so I think I think they're they're there. And then Bournemouth, I I, I don't I, I think Forest might be okay, um, based on the fact that their coach is an ex Liverpool youth coach and comes kind of from our system. And he, Forest were in the relegation zone, I think, when he took over last season. I I, I think they might be okay. Well, we'll see, we'll see. And I, I do think. Leeds will do better than most pundits have said because um, you know we're, we don't have the American bias in our analysis <laughs> that, uh, that, that exists there. Uh, yeah. yeah, I yeah. think I, I think Everton could certainly go down. I guess I'm I think that 
that Lampard is uh, going to be sacked, um, you know, relatively soon. Is that the segue um, into the next section? Who is most likely to get fired? <laughs> I mean, it does seem like Hassan Hoodle and Tuchel are, are up there um, with with Frank. But yeah, yeah. Uh, and well, I feel like that could is... go really bad for Southampton. That's that's why I had them because if they sack Hassan Hoodle, I'm not sure that's going to go well for them. Who are they going to replace him with? I think that's it's, exactly. I, I think, and they just don't have a lot of talent there anymore. I mean, that's you know. Um, I think he's been doing a lot with not very much. Yeah, yeah. Um, they actually like they didn't look terrible for the first twenty minutes in that game against Spurs, but then, yeah, um, they just capitulated. They gave in. Yeah. The other thing is, that I'd say like for the European places, like the mid, I, I, I do. So I, I kind of think that uh, you know Arsenal. I, I actually would pick um, West Ham to be sixth. And then I think United's going to be kind of right there with, you know, Palace, West Ham, Newcastle. Um, I, I think it's possible United could finish as low as like eighth, ninth. Like, I don't think that's out of the question. Um, yeah. I think Arsenal's locked in for fifth for me. I mean, it's right, you know, it's right there. Like either them or Chelsea are going to be fifth. But I, I think Chelsea will have enough to, you know, keep fourth. But so, um, just, just to be clear on the question in hand, first manager to leave. You had Lampard, right? So. I think so. I mean, I, I, I think. Well, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know about first. I would. I don't know about first manager leave, but I think he's going to be sacked. Uh, I'll say before the World Cup break, or or at least like right at the World Cup break. I, I don't think he's going to make it to the next year. And that's that's early. I I didn't think that that was the case until recently, but yeah. it just that I don't know. It's it looks to me like it could go badly quick there. The way things are, you may be surprised. But uh, your thoughts on first managers leave? I don't know why I find this so interesting because it does feel like a, a previous seasons have been like, oh, how boring is this? But I just feel like this might actually be interesting as to who might go first. I had no idea about Hassan Hutel, and I think that if he's like two two more four one defeats away from from getting the welly, the the problem is is like it's to Sean's point that like he's done stuff on shoestrings. Mm -hmm. um, and he's pulled like some really good results out of his out of his backside that have kind of kind of that's put him on further on, like added more minutes to the life support machine. But I think that if they're getting rid of everyone behind him, I'm just not sure who they're gonna bring in that's gonna do a better job. But so maybe the shift, maybe the shift will help. I don't know. But yeah, maybe, maybe Pochettino needs a reset. Maybe that's what's going on there. Um well yeah, Pochettino. Right? Pretty big <laughs> step down. So, well, he, but he, he was selling to manager, right? Maybe he's like, yeah, yeah. And I think that that Lampard, I I think that they'll persist with Lampard well longer than they probably should, and that will be their undoing. That feels on par with some of the decision making. Yes, yeah. The uh, the other left field one I heard uh, was that Rogers might leave because apparently he's very upset about the lack of uh, players they brought in. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> They, 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 it might be better for him to quit before they sack him because I, I, that doesn't, that whole situation doesn't seem very good either. I, I think, I think Lester, I, you know, I don't think they'll get relegation territory, but yeah. I don't, I, I think they're, they're in for a big fall off this year. Yeah. They got a lot of players as a contract at the end of the season as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm a bit less interested in this category, but let's go with it anyway. Uh, player of the season, final final one, uh, Sean. Liverpool or for the league? Yes. Uh, yeah. so it would be the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> player of the season? Um, well, I, I think Sadio Mane is obviously getting a Ballon d'Or. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> but, but, I'm but just going to go with Mo Salah because it's, because it's easy and, and it's, I think it's pretty likely – and I, I think it probably would be more based on I, I could see Salah getting a lot more assists this year to Darwin. Um, you know, and, and he he's he gets a fair number of assists in the past, but um I think he de I think Salah definitely gets double digit assists in the league this year. We, we we don't talk enough about how how good he is, but uh, there are some things that kind of uh, came up in my mind this weekend about like the one season wonder who never passes to anyone who's greedy <laughs> and he's always diving. And it's like, 
like someone I saw someone say, like, oh, the, the match of the day UK show would have had a 15 minute segment on diving if 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 he, if Salah had gone down like Chilwell or Mitrovic did. Mitrovic, yeah. Abs- absolutely would have. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's it's and it's it's the same narrative with Trent's defending. Like, yeah, it's bad, but how often do Kyle Walker, Walker yeah. and Reese James get beat the same way? You know, it's just there's this focus on Liverpool yeah. players for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, there's totally a positive narrative about Reese James. If he gets beaten, it's about the skill of the opposition. If tr- anything happens to Trent, it's about Trent. Every time I watch him play, he gets beaten. And I'm like, that nobody ever talks about this. And yeah. Trent gets yeah. destroyed anytime he gets beaten. I, I, yeah, I, I do think Chelsea might have a hard season unless, unless let's say, Todd Bowley signs 55 other players that they don't need. I, I kind of, I don't, so. Player of the season. It's got to be Cucurella, right? If he's worth sixty million. <laughs> I don't know what your perspective is, Dan. I'm gonna say this and then I'm gonna duck Holland. Yeah, I'm we're gonna end there. Let's uh, <laughs> Do you have another category? Oh, we're I think we're out. The reason I say that is because he's the brand new shiny thing. Just the amount of like yeah. The lating that was going on during that match, too. I was like, oh, sweet. oh Gra- the Graham right. Lasso was just over the top. I was like, come on. That's uh, like part of the reason I didn't watch more of it. So I, I couldn't stand listening to it. But. He scores as he always does. It's his first game, you fucking muppet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they only played 29 games last year. Like, he does get injured. So, yeah. Please, please, please. He's going to get injured. Let happen soon. So we don't have to. Uh, live with this okay all right um so next week um so there's some predictions we can come back and investigate those at the end of the season uh but really the only thing that matters is that the reds win the league right that's uh you know the the, the most significant thing that would happen and the champions league you know i'm I'm okay with either or but uh both would be lovely both get greedy paul get greedy both well, oh, you know, we're, we're about we're due yeah. for a league win. It feels yeah. like for about five years now, I've been saying the finals in Istanbul, the finals in Istanbul, it's got to be ours. Anyway, the final is in Istanbul this year, so um, we'll we'll we'll, we'll uh, hopefully uh, have a another outcome, a positive outcome about Istanbul. Anyway, um, so we'll be back next week at some point because our game is on a Monday, so uh, it, probably our next podcast is as far away as Liverpool's next game. Um, but uh, if you enjoyed this, please share it with a friend. Thank you so much, uh, Sean. Thank you so much, Daz. Um, this is fun as always. Uh, like follow us on Twitter. Um, we only tweet and retweet um, things that we consider credible. Um, I, I did retweet the comment about Manchester referee Tierney. Uh, you know, how, how is he so generous to Manchester United? Because um, that felt credible. Leaving it there. If you enjoyed the podcast, please share with a friend. Follow us at First Day Copites on Twitter. We only tweet and retweet from sources we think are credible. Finally, music is courtesy of Hypnotic. They're a Welsh electro pop band, and you can find them at https colon forward slash forward slash hyperfollow.com forward slash hypnotic. Hypnotic is H Y P E N O T I C. Thanks so much to them. <laughs>